Welcome back students. Uh, in this lecture, uh, we will talk about op-amp non-idealities. In the, in the first or second lecture when we talked about the op-amp, um, we looked at ideal operation amplifier and I described the characteristics of uh, the ideal op-amp in terms of gain, uh, input impedance, input resistance, output resistance and things like that. Um, in reality, the op-amp is made using devices, actual physical devices. And these devices uh, have their own shortcomings. Uh, due to that, you have some non-idealities which creep into each op-amp. Uh, two of those non-idealities we are going to talk in this lecture. One of them is a DC offset voltage and the second one is uh, DC offset current and DC input current and they happen because of uh, certain types of devices, for example, BJTs or MOSFETs uh, being used inside the operation amplifier. So let's discuss in detail. Uh, so the first uh, non-ideality um, we are going to discuss is uh, DC offsets. Now, um, as I said, uh, each operational amplifier is uh, is made using devices. Let's uh, let's kind of physically draw those devices to see. So, for example, in this particular example, I'm going to show you that there are some MOSFETs at the input. Now, um, since uh, initial assumption is the op-amp is ideal, uh, when we say the op-amp is ideal, we are assuming that. Um, the devices which are uh, which are at the input they are exactly same meaning um, both these devices let's say in this case let's call them m1 and m2 they are identical um, in reality uh, when we manufacture the op amps the devices can be slightly different from each other and that results in um, in an input offset voltage uh, which i'm going to describe it to you so let's say this is your plus and minus terminal so the input um, the DC offset, we model it as as following. So we show the ideal op amp. Plus minus, and then we say that here is a small amount of DC offset, which we show at the input. In this particular case, I'm just showing this offset voltage, which could be um, as small as a could be microvolts, millivolts or tens of millivolts depending upon the types of devices which are used. So um, we insert this offset voltage at the input of the op amp um, which will um, which will quantify the mismatch between the two inputs. Okay, And this is your um, ideal op amp. Alright. And this is plus and minus terminal. Now the sign of the offset voltage um, is not really important um, because it could change from uh, let's say we um, we manufactured you know 100 op amps let's say using um, um, you know any any process uh, foundry process. Now each in each each version or each implementation or each chip. Uh, the mismatch between um, uh, the input device M1 and M2 uh, is going to be different. Okay, so we take one chip, uh, we find that uh, VOS is equal to plus 5 millivolts. The second chip is, uh, let's say, VOS2 is equal to plus 3 millivolts. The third chip could be 0 millivolts, very close to uh, each other, and the fourth chip could be. A minus 3 millivolts something like that so this is a statistical property of of the devices matching between the two devices okay so um, the polarity as I said it's unknown um, and now what does uh, what does this uh, offset voltage really do uh, to the op amp so let's assume for a minute that um, the input referred offset voltage is let's say 10 millivolts okay so we are going to draw this op amp And we can say that this is plus minus 10 millivolts. Okay. Now um, let's assume for a minute that this ideal op amp or has a gain of 1000. 
all right now if i short the two inputs and connect them to the analog ground like this what do we expect to see at the output so you will quickly realize that this positive terminal is connected to the negative potential compared to the negative terminal so we expect the output voltage to drop now you would say that hey this is 10 millivolts and this is gain of thousands so i should see um, something like a minus 10 volts coming at the output however if the op amp supply voltage is let's say 0 to 5 volts then this cannot happen right you cannot get minus 10 uh, 10 volts so you would end up getting uh, 0 volts at the output because the output of the op amp will get saturated to uh, the lowest uh, potential so this is an important fact you should uh, uh, understand in terms of concepts okay now um, let's draw transfer characteristics of the op amp um, so let's say if we have an ideal op amp and i'm only plotting uh, note the scale here so this is your output voltage and this is your vid which is in millivolts and output voltage is in volts all right so if the op amp is ideal then we would get uh, the characteristics let's say this is 5 volts and let's say this is 0 volts the characteristics would look like this something like this and the slope of this curve would be uh, 1000 because av um, av is 1000 all right and this would be this would be zero something like that now um, if we have an offset of uh, uh, 10 millivolts which is shown let me use a different color and use a green so if the the vos is equal to plus 10 millivolts all right which means I have to apply an input voltage. Um, let me uh, let me draw a separate uh, picture for you, so that is easy to understand. This is VOS plus minus and now this becomes our new op amp right here. We can uh, create this model of the op amp using which which has the offset voltage built in as such like this. Okay, so this becomes our V out and this becomes our positive input and this becomes our negative input. Now if I apply VID between these two what is the transfer characteristics so if vos is equal to zero then we know um, it looks like the ideal characteristics of the op amp as i have shown already in the in the picture here uh, let's say vos is 10 millivolts uh, with the sign as i have shown here let's say 10 millivolts over here then i would like you to think about is um, what would be the direction what, uh, how would the, the transfer characteristics move? Would it move to move up or down or would it move left or right? I want to give you uh, 10 seconds to think about it. Okay, so you can see that I need to have plus minus 10 millivolts here to have a net uh, zero input at the input of the op amp. So with this kind of sign, we would expect the transfer characteristics to move to the right okay and the transfer characteristics would look like this something like this the entire transfer characteristics would move to 10 millivolts here like this and if uh, the vos was minus 10 millivolts then we would see the transfer characteristics which would look like this something like this and this would be your minus 10 millivolts okay let me redraw this so it looks
something like this and this would be minus 10 millivolts when VOS is minus 10 millivolts. For circuit analysis, um, you can model this VOS voltage source on the positive or negative terminal according to your convenience and we will see uh, what I mean by that convenience and then um, we can um, generally uh, whenever you have multiple input um, input sources it could be offset voltage it could be input voltage one or input voltage two then you should uh, try to use superposition theorem uh, to make your life easier so we can um, we can we can study the impact of offset voltages using um, by by zeroing out the input and then we can use superposition so for ease of analysis um, i like to keep offset voltage on the wherever there is no feedback okay um, it behaves exactly the same way it's just that uh, analyzing the circuit becomes very uh, very easy so let's take a couple of examples and this point will be clear so let's take a simple example which is we call it unity gain buffer so if this is v in then we expect because of a virtual short between these two we expect v out is equal to v in in this particular case we are assuming uh, gain is um, very very large okay now if we have offset voltage in this op amp then the situation will change slightly so what we would do then is we would erase this let's say let's erase only this portion right here and then as i said we would introduce offset voltage in the non feedback terminal so this would be plus minus vos so you can immediately convince yourself the input voltage over here using kirchhoff's voltage law will be v in minus vos hence the output voltage will be also V in minus V O S. Okay. As I said again, the sign of the offset voltage is not important because from one part to another part, it will be changing randomly. Right. So offset voltage can be positive or negative. So you have to keep that in mind. The next example I'm going to give you is your uh, conventional inverting amplifier so in this case we know v in this is r1 and r2 so v out will be equal to minus r2 divided by r1 times v in and if we apply the offset voltage let's say we apply the offset voltage as follows plus minus v o s now what do we do to figure out uh, as i said earlier we will use superposition theorem to apply the superposition theorem we would first ignore this input we will ground this out and then we would apply vos in that case this potential will be vos and it looks like a it looks like a from this point it looks like a non inverting amplifier and you can quickly convince yourself the output would be 1 plus r2 divided by r1 times vos okay so this was your ideal situation and this is an extra term which will come in um, and um, that would be an artifact due to the offset voltage as i said again the sign of the offset voltage is not important the sign of the the offset voltage will will change from one chip to another chip okay all right now um, the true impact of the offset voltage uh, you can really see using a numerical example so let's take a numerical example which will make you comfortable so here what we're going to talk about is a cascaded amplifier stage Uh, please draw the schematics in your book 
so that you become comfortable with different op amp uh, configurations here is the first amplifier okay so, so here is my first input v in that's applied this is r2 r1 remember feedback should be on the negative terminal and then uh, this is going to give me some gain but it's not enough for me so i'm going to add another stage here so the next stage is going to be looking like this minus plus and here is your next amplifier here we call it r4 and r3 okay first of all let's see uh, what the output will be just due to the input voltage okay so the out output due to input voltage as we can see um, vo1 here and v out so vo1 will be i'm sure you have figured it out already r2 divided by r1 times v in and this gets multiplied again by 1 plus r4 divided by r3 and that will be equal to your v out okay so that's the overall gain uh, that we are trying to get so let's say if this was 99 r uh, r2 divided by r1 and let's say r4 divided by r3 is also 99 then we get v out is equal to 10000 times v in got it now uh, this is the ideal scenario now let's analyze the impact of offset voltage so um, we can quickly see that uh, let's let's insert offset voltage as i said uh, we would like to insert the uh, offset voltage input referred offset voltage of the op amp uh, let's call this amplifier a1 and this is op amp a2 now key thing to note is each amplifier will have its own offset voltage but offset voltage of each amplifier will not be same even on the same chip because they are made with different devices so amplifier a1 may have vos1 amplifier a2 will have vos2 something like that and they could be positive negative uh, depending upon the devices which are actually used to implement those amplifiers all right so we can um, now analyze the effect of let's if analyze the effect of vos1 for that what we will do is we will remove the input and we will insert the offset voltage here so this is our offset voltage plus minus vos1 and at that point we will ground the input so you can quickly see that um, the contribution of offset voltage is going to be and let's insert uh, VOS2 also and that I'm going to introduce here something like this V out will be equal to VOS1 and this again is a uh, non-inverting terminal so R2 divided by R1 and that will get multiplied by another 1 plus R4 divided by R3 this is due to VOS1 and due to VOS2 we can see it will be plus VOS2 1 plus R4 divided by R3 okay so now we can add these three terms together and then you can see that the equation will look like this v out is equal to v in plus v o s 1 1 plus r 2 divided by r 1 plus v o s 2 and multiply the by 1 plus r 4 divided by r 3 
just math okay and as I said again if this is 100 and if this is 100 then we can quickly see the V out will be equal to 10 to the power 4 times V in plus 10 to the power 4 times VOS1 plus 100 times VOS2 okay so let's say uh, the VOS1 is uh, 10 millivolts then uh, this contribution would be equal to almost 100 volts okay so the amplifier would uh, would rail out as we like to call it it will get clipped one way or the other and this part will be equal to 100 times VOS2 which is um, let's say if it was uh, 10 millivolts and it could be some random direction it could be plus minus whatever uh, so we are only going to look at the um, kind of magnitude uh, not the sign of the contribution due to offset voltage so in this particular case it would be uh, 10 millivolts multiplied by uh, 100 which is 1 volt okay so uh, the quick thing to note here is that let's say you have a series of amplifiers just like what we have done here cascaded amplifiers then the offset of the first stage dominates because it goes through a lot more gain okay so in this particular case the offset VOS1 uh, will contribute dominate um, you know the dominate the output so you have to be aware of impact of offset voltage and um, so when you when you buy an op amp um, just like the the example i gave you earlier um, you know how do we get rid of this offset first of all so um, what you can do is uh, there is something called trimming of the amplifier so this offset can be trimmed Uh, manually and each manufacturer will provide you some circuit which is telling you that hey you know you go in there and you put a trim part and you zero out each each amplifiers offset you can do that okay but that's a manual process um, the second thing um, as designers what we like to do is we like to use capacitors to our advantage so if you use a capacitor and we like to call that DC blocking cap okay so if you use a DC blocking capacitor then um, then the DC offset from each amplifier will not propagate further okay so for example uh, let's take an example let's say this is one amplifier this is second amplifier and if I insert a capacitor in between then as far as DC is concerned the signal DC will not go through okay only AC signal can go through so I'm giving you really really elementary or rudimentary explanation and all this stuff we're going to go through in detail um, as we dig into the devices okay but just the concept is the capacitor does not uh, allow DC to go through uh, the important caveat here is that uh, your signal content you know should not contain DC because otherwise the signal will also get blocked so let's say you're talking about voice signal which is from 20 Hertz to 20 kilohertz okay then you can use um, use the capacitor block as a block um, as long as um, everything in this frequency range is is moving uh, forward from one amplifier to another amplifier we are okay we just don't want the DC from one stage to uh, get amplified and um, and you know um, saturate the next stage so this is uh, one um, issue that you have to deal with as we design complex circuits okay the third uh, solution is um, an offset cancellation circuit circuit techniques so these are very popular um, here what you do is you go through some kind of offset cancellation cycle okay so for example uh, you have one amplifier and then um, then you store the offset in the calibration cycle on VOS prime over here 
and in the next phase what you can do is you can you can um, use that capacitor and subtract out the VOS as we go along to the next stage. So this required some kind of uh, special uh, you know timing provisions because you need to go through a cycle for offset cancellation techniques sometimes okay. So these are various techniques that people use to cancel out the offset. This becomes uh, this comes into play mainly in case of amplifiers which are using BJT transistors okay. BJT transistors have um, small amount of input current flowing in them. So MOSFET transistors have, have a gate okay so there is the amount of current flowing in this uh, in this gate is is virtually zero however the bipolar transistors generally have a base current okay and that base current is going to be um, fraction of what the collector current is all this stuff i'm going to go through um, in upcoming lectures uh, but at this high level discussion you should just uh, assume some current is flowing inside the amplifier. So what we can do is we can show the DC bias current flowing in the amplifier like this. So there will be some current flowing this way and there will be another current flowing this way. Okay. So this would be a positive input and this would be a negative input and let's say there is IB1 and IB2. Okay, and this is your yeah. Now, um, one thing I would like you to remember, if you remember, there is a uh, whenever we have uh, let's say V1 and V2 applied to positive and negative input, then we are quick to come out with two properties, which is VCM, which is equal to V1 plus V2 divided by 2 and Vd which is differential voltage which is V1 minus V2. Okay. Similarly here we can also uh, come up with um, average input current, input bias current into the amplifier that we can call it IB1 plus IB2 divided by 2 okay. and the difference current we like to call it input offset current and that we can say it's mod of IB1 minus IB2. The reason we use mod is we don't know uh, due to manufacturing variation is IB1 greater than IB2 or the other way around. So we just like to show uh, difference between them without any sign as a mod. Okay. So for example if you look at the bipolar transistors Okay, IB1 and IB2 each can be of the order of uh, let's say 100 nanoamps the base current and then the offset voltage um, can be of the order of I'm sorry I made a mistake this could be of the order of 100 nano amp and this could be order of 10 times less of set for current. Okay. So we can analyze the impact of um, these uh, bias currents as well as the offset currents using circuit examples and then it will become clear to you and I'll show, uh, show a technique which we can use to mitigate this offset current. So let's take first example, our favorite non-inverting amplifier. R1, R2 and here is a current flowing IB1 
I need to. Okay, the current is flowing in this direction. Again, this is just a notation. And we are applying a input voltage at this point. Okay. So how do we analyze this circuit? So let's analyze the effect of IB1 and IB2 separately. So in that case, we will assume that uh, the input voltage is zero. We know what input voltage does at the output. And now we are going to try to figure out what the output due to just this input voltage is going to be. Um, 1 plus R2 divided by R1 times Vn. And we want to figure out what, the, what is the transfer function of IB1 to the output and IB2 to the output. Okay. So let's, um, we can redraw this schematic a little bit better as follows. And here I'm just grounding the input. And here we have IB1 and here is our IB2. This is minus and this is plus. So I have removed input voltage and I have only put in IB1 and IB2. And we're going to see what happens at the output. Okay. Now, if you look at IB2, it's flowing between um, between one analog ground to another analog ground. Okay, so IB2 really doesn't have any impact on the output. Okay, so convince yourself uh, there is uh, IB2 is just a current flowing uh, between uh, one analog ground to another analog ground, and it doesn't develop any voltage at the positive terminal. If we look at IB1. Again, what is the voltage at this point, at the negative terminal of the op amp? Since the gain of the amplifier, AV, is very large, we know that it's a virtual shot. The negative and positive terminal are a virtual shot, as a result of which the negative terminal will also look like analog ground. It will look like an analog ground. So there will not be any current flowing through resistor R1. So all the current IB1 has to flow through our resistor R2. Okay, so you can quickly see then the voltage at output due to uh, due to the bias currents is going to be only due to IB1 and that will be equal to IB1 times R2. Okay. So we can um, modify our um, output equation to include the effect of IB1 R2 and this would be your V out. So it would have a V in component which is desired and this would be your undesired component. Okay. So what's the problem with this one? The problem is we want to get high gain with this amplifier. So, we typically try to increase R2 as much as possible to get high gain because we want ratio of R2 divided by R1 to be large. As soon as you start increasing R2, this component which is IB1 times R2 will start coming into play. You know, so this requires that keep R2 small and that kind of limits your gain that you're going to have. Okay, so don't lose heart. There is a way we can um, mitigate this effect and very simple solution, which I'm going to show you. Let's see. So this is your original amplifier. R1, R2 and we are going to 
add another resistor here minus plus and that would be my V in and this resistor let's say is call it R3 now um, as far as the signal goes signal path goes the AC signal path this R3 doesn't do anything okay and I'm going to draw this is IB1 this is IB2 in this direction okay now one thing to remember is IB1 and IB2 will have same direction because they represent uh, the base current of the amplifier okay depending upon PNP or NPN you will have same device on both sides it's just that their value will not be uh, identical okay so we can uh, that's why I'm showing them in the same direction over here so um, you can quickly prove for yourself that um, just due to V the V out due to V in is identical 1 plus R2 divided by R1 times V in and the V out contribution at the V out contribution due to IB1 is going to be the same which is plus this is the IB1 times R2 contribution so this would be same as before IB1 times R2 and when we look at IB2 only transfer function for IB2 to output what you would do is you would remove the input voltage you would remove IB1 and you will see that this IB2 current has to flow here in this particular uh, resistor and this voltage is going to be minus R3 times IB2 at the positive terminal so from the positive terminal to the output you will have 1 plus R2 divided by R1 okay and then you have R3 times IB2 and that has a negative sign so we can um, you can then see that if you want to mitigate the effect of IB1 and IB2 you would like these two gains to be approximately same in that case what will happen is if we choose r2 is equal to 1 plus r2 divided by r1 times r3 if we do this okay which in a way is telling you that um, r3 is equal to R1 R2 divided by R1 plus R2 which is R1 parallel R2 so if we meet this condition then our V output voltage becomes it will become 1 plus R2 divided by R1 times V input this is the desired term along with that you will get R2 times IB1 minus IB2 that is your I offset okay do not confuse this with iPhone operating system this is offset current now what have we gained by doing this what we have gained is IB1 and IB2 individually they are generally large numbers but the difference between them can be an order of magnitude smaller so by by simply adding this resistor we are able to reduce the impact uh, impact of offset currents uh, to difference between the offset current okay so this is um, uh, this is the way to um, reduce the impact of 
बायस करण इनपुट बायस करण 